today was to encapsulate some of the things that I haven't covered yet, but, but also introduce some new ideas along with the old ideas so that they can all be meddled together into one kind of package that you can go home with. And sometimes I'll repeat a few things simply because I know I speak very fast, don't I? When I get excited, you, yeah, when I get excited, I, I even speak faster. It's terrible there. And I, I'm, I'm going about three sentences ahead of my brain. Um, and, and so today it's all about pain and it's all about, and it's all about um, our energy and it's about being able to do the things we want to do. And unfortunately, we, we're, we're told, well, oh, you've got pain, you're getting old. You know, I'm sorry, no, no, oh, you're getting slow, you're getting old. Yes, it does happen to a degree, and you'll see that in a moment, but not to the degree that's happening in our society. We can really regain our lives and stuff if we adopt some really simple strategies that, that I've been showing you. And, and I made a kind of a list, and I'm not going to go through that list because you can read it up there, but there are lots of things in our lives that are the drainers of our energy and the, the causes of our pain. One way, you see, I'm doing energy and pain together because when you have no energy, you have pain. And when you have no pain, you have energy. Yeah. So the opposite ends of each other. So pain literally drains you of all your energy. You know when you're feeling sick and unwell, um, you know, you've, you've, you've got a headache or a migraine, or you've got gout, you've definitely got no energy to do anything. You just lay down and complain. Men? Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean, because that's a, a man's condition. Oh, it's a very, very, very simple one to fix. All of them, at least in 95% of the cases, are really simple to fix, okay? So we've got all of these ones, poor sleep, poor nutrition, and you know that. But most of us don't think about it. And we don't think, oh, hold on, it's that poor sleep. So what is it? Well, they're all linked in together. And I didn't plan this, so I'm going to introduce you to something called melatonin. And no, I don't sell it. If you're in Australia, you have to go to a doctor, you can go, go. It's not for sleep. It's for pain. It's for energy. It's for anti-cancer, anti-heart attack, anti-stroke, anti-diabetes. Anti, it's plus energy, pro energy, um, and it's melatonin. And if you're in the US, you can just walk up to the local drugstore and get it, which is fantastic. We just want to show it. By the way, I should tell you, melatonin was just happened to be banned one week after Prozac was introduced. Oh, because melatonin and its cousin tryptophan are used for depression. I'm not talking politics. They were the main ways people dealt with depression, anxiety, stress, and all those other things, and now they've got a new drug. So in the, in, in the US they've reintroduced it, but in Australia we still have it. Get up and complain. Because, uh, yeah, anyway, coming back here, these are the things. Melatonin is one of them that help. So everything changes as we get older. There is no doubt that there are some changes. And at the top there I've got inflammation, which I'll be talking about at every presentation. You know, it's the inflammation. Inflammation is literally what drains you. When you're sick, you've got a virus, then you feel exhausted because your body is fighting that virus with inflammation. When you've got diabetes type two and unregulated blood sugar, you've got high inflammation and you're exhausted all the time. All this, when you carry too much weight around the belly, you've got inflammation I'll probably rename it now called fat from aging. Fat formation, fat formation. We've coined a new expression. Fat formation, okay? And that fat formation, oh yeah, anyway, you know, that is what drains us. It's not the extra weight, it's the actual fact that it's causing inflammation on our body and that is draining all our energy out of the way. And so we now have inflammation, we have our telomeres. Now, telomeres are really interesting. They're in our, in our cells. And, and they're kind of little rubbery bands that tell us how long we're going to live. The longer our telomeres, you don't have to worry about it that much. But the scientists talk about telomeres all the time. And they're a pretty good indicator. If you've got really long telomeres, little rubber bands on your, cell, on your cells, then you're going to live longer. That's the best scientific predictor of living longer, is your telomeres. And so they get shorter, obviously, and it's saying, well, when they get really short, hey, you know, your life expectancy. Coenzyme Q10, I've mentioned that a couple of times, and that's a supplement. And coenzyme Q10 declines 
as we age. Now, if you're physically active, why do I do that when I say physically active? You know what it is, okay? Well, when we're physically active, then we build the muscle mitochondria and we build telomeres. But when we're less active, but the telomere, sorry, the um, coenzyme Q10 goes down. Now, coenzyme Q10 is probably the single best, well, one of the best supplements for lowering your risk of heart attack and stroke as well. So as it goes down, your risk of heart attack and stroke goes up. So you can go to a shop and get 300 milligrams of coenzyme Q10. And the studies have been done on 150 to 300, and 150 is pretty good, 300 is best. But you can choose which one, and you can go get that as a supplement on a daily basis and it's true. Then you've got your hormones. Ladies, your estrogen drops down, particularly post-menopausal. So, here it is up there, and estrogen is estrogen is fantastic for so many things. It's antioxidant, it's anti-inflammatory, it's energy. It actually provides you with energy and a little bit of motivation and a whole raft of other things. And if I had time, I'd give you a lecture presentation, a talk. Lecture is what I used to do back at uni, wasn't it? Yeah. Okay, a talk, I'd give you a talk on the what's called the estrobolome, the estrogen gut, and how your gut after menopause becomes the single biggest determinant of your estrogen levels in your body. So ladies, if you want to get your estrogen level up and or even just rebalanced, it's your gut microbiome. And there is a fantastic YouTube about to go up on that next week when I get home. I've recorded it all, I just haven't put it together and put it up there. And it's all about that estrogen gut for ladies. But the same works for men. Now, not for that gut, no, we'll work on that one. That's the testosterone, and the same thing works for men. The gut, as you get older, becomes more important, that's the gut microbiome, for your testosterone. So you want energy, it comes back to the gut. Then you've got your gut microbiome. And I just want to show you a little picture of how your gut microbiome changes as we age. And obviously that's going to be better to watch out that one, but as we age, our gut microbiome starts off really, really narrow. Then it goes out wide. Watch me for a moment, folks. I'll watch you. It's, it's, it's narrow here. Then it goes out wide as we, you know, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then when we get over about 20, 25, it starts to get really, really narrow again. And that narrowness is a reflection of literally how long you're going to live. It's a reflection of how much energy and it's a reflection of how much pain you've got. It's really interesting what they're comparing it. But on this graph up here, on this diagram, if you look at that blue one, the blue circle, that's representing a particular type of bacteria called bifidobacteria. Bifidobacterium, there are lots of varieties of it, but bifido. Bifido is what babies are born, with, are born into. They pick it up from the mum. It's what the breast milk feeds, and it's what the first years of the life grow. So you can see there's a huge amount of bifidobacterium in the early, there's a lot of blue, and then as we get age, and we all get older and older, there's less and less blue. So the bifidobacteria are a pretty good indicator of how long you're gonna live, how much energy you've got, and also how much pain, and I'll show you some of that later. So what we wanna do, is get some more bifidobacteria. How do we get it? Supplements, kefir, I've already told you all that, haven't I? I've told you. But now you're getting serious and you're thinking, oh, hold on, I can actually I can get some bifidobacteria. But when you get the supplements, nearly 90% of the ones you buy in a shop will have bifidobacteria in them. They'll have bifido and lactobacillus and a combination of them. And the whole idea is they're the ones that are gonna predict you living on. But it just shows you how it changes as we age. And we only just discovered that right now. So what can you do for energy and pain? I've kind of given you some hints already, but the first one is attitude. Attitude, attitude, attitude. I know far too many, I said this on I think the first or second day, you know, I know far too many people in their 50s are already feel and act like they're in their 90s. And, and I know people up there who go, oh, you know, I can't do anything, I can't walk anymore, I can only do 100 meters. Well, my message is do 101, and the following day, 102, and the following day, 103, 
You would have come to my, you've all come to my lectures already. And you know that I'm talking about a little change every single day. It's the little changes. It's not going to the gym and working out really hard for two days and getting sick and not ever going back again that counts. What counts is the little changes every single day and that positive attitude about, I can, I can. Don't give up living because you've got. Already so many of you come up to me and, and I, I'm sorry, I haven't had much time in, in some situations, but you've come up and you said, hey, look, I've got this condition and, and um, you know, I haven't been told I can do anything about it. There is something you can do about it. The ad, part of the attitude is you can. You can. I'm just fortunate in that I spend my life researching this so that I can then pass it on to other people, but also to help myself. As I told, have told some people, I went through my own health crisis just over a year ago. I nearly died. This is probably the first audience I've ever told this to. I nearly died. No idea why. They couldn't know measurements, all the measurements, and all of a sudden. But my attitude, as soon as I, I worked out, I researched and said, okay, what can I do to get better? Not sit down and go, oh no, poor me. And that's what we all need to do. We need to spend time. There is nothing more important, as I'll show you about. It. So it's our attitude and nutrition. Hypnotism. I love hypnotism. We used to do some hypnosis. We actually do hypnosis on our grandkids occasionally. They don't know it. You know? <laughs> you know, you will feel better. You're going to be a better football player. No, we haven't tried that one. I'll, I'll try that with my 12 year old. Um, when she's asleep one night. But we used to do it, it's very effective. And things like this, I'm putting up some ideas, acupuncture, brilliant, brilliant for pain, brilliant for energy. And there are hundreds of studies on this, hundreds. So when somebody says, oh no, I don't know about it. No, the research is good. You just gotta find a good acupuncturist. I've got one in uh, uh, Fremantle if you want. Next time you're over there, I'll, I'll give you the, the, the thing. Um, aromatherapy, and I'll show you a couple of things that they use in aromatherapy. And again, hundreds of studies on pain and aromatherapy, I'll show you. And of course, life balance. And the unfortunate thing is we lose that, lose that life balance. And when we, we need to think what is it important in our life. And I want to emphasize the top one. I've got a list of things up there. And if I ask you, I ask most people, what's the top thing, their top priority in life? Yeah, I know as a teenager, it's you know the opposite sex or the same sex or whatever it is, it doesn't matter, okay? But it's just sex. Um, the whole point about this is as we get older, we need to focus more on that top health. There is no, no reason not to. We've got the time or we've got more time to do it. And spending a half an hour learning about health, reading a book on health, um, watching my brilliant YouTubes, have I told you they're good? <laughs> and, uh, um, you know, watching, watching those and other people on YouTube and stuff like that, watching and learning. Because every time you learn something, it also motivates you to move in that positive attitude. When you surround yourself with healthy things. So our, our daughter will ring up and say, oh, I've just been for a 2K walk or run with the dog. I've been to the gym. What are you guys doing? And we say, we just got up. That's true, but she starts at 4.30. Okay, and so we go, okay, let's go to the gym or let's go for the walk and do those things. Surround yourself with the positive health messages constantly. Have something beside your bed as a constant reminder that health, because if you don't have health, you don't have anything. You can't look after the family. You can't see friends. You can't have relationships. You can't, you know, develop and study and careers and purpose and things. There is nothing more important than your health. Put that in perspective, please. So with that in mind, physical activity. Now, if you want energy, the easiest way to gain energy is physical activity. It's really interesting though. When you talk about these things, generally you lose energy to gain it. So if you're really tired, the last thing you want to do is go for a walk. And yet when you come back from that walk, how do you feel? Energized, yeah. Because what it's doing, see that's my milkshake there. You know, it looks more like a rubbish can, but it's a milkshake container. And what it is, it looks like a toilet brush at the top there too, doesn't it? Yeah. So my, my rubbish can was, it was really a milkshake container. And what it is, is, is when you are physically active, you actually increase the biochemistry and you get all the biochemistry going and it keeps going. 
so that when you've sat down, you know you're not cold straight away, you're hot for the next half an hour or an hour, you're cooling down and you're energized and you can go around about do just about anything. Physical activity then gives you energy later on the next day because you're fitter and again, that little bit every single day increases your blood flow, it balances your hormones. Goes through all these things, it's anti-inflammatory and antioxidant, but you ready? Here it is. It's good for the gut microbiome. They've done studies where they've got people who are physically active, and compared them to people who don't, and then they've given the people who aren't physically active junk food. I won't record this just in case people want to think they can eat a lot of junk food and be physically active. But the research actually showed that the physical activity counteracted many of the damages done by the junk food, up to a point. So being physically active actually fixes your gut. The people with the healthiest gut are those who are physically active and looking after their gut. So this is two one communication system. And of course that, but then they've taken, you ready? They've taken the, the bacteria out of the gut of people who are physically active. This is called a, a fecal microbiome transplant. I call it poo swapping. I give the scientific terms clear cut. They take some poop from a person who's active and they put it in a mouse that's inactive and the mouse becomes more active. And the mouse, you ready? Starts to develop all the characteristics of, now that doesn't mean you want to go out there and, hey, who am I going to swap some poo with today? Uh, it works with mental health, by the way, and you'll see other things too. So you've got to check, make sure they're smart, intelligent, happy, and physically active, then, then see if you can do a poo swap with them. Maybe not. Most of this is in trials with mice, okay? But all the mice studies are showing fundamental and, and fantastic stuff. So we've got this. So what's the best exercise to gain energy? It's whatever you want to do, first of all. I've been researching um, osteoporosis and I put a lot up on my videos, but I'm finishing one up right now all about the best exercise for, for osteoporosis. And if you're over 60, which you are, sorry, if you're over 70, which most of you are, I know we've got a couple of young ones on the edge over there. If you are, the best exercise for osteoporosis is the stairs. But when you come down, go boom, boom. It's the impact on one going down and it's the resistance when you walk up. Those two things combined is the one solution. No one else will tell you that because I've just put it together after reading about 50 studies on what to do and how to do it. And you know, tennis players have more bow density in their right hand and soccer players in their right foot, if they're a right footer, because they kick the ball, kick the ball, kick the ball. Bang, 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 bang. So when you're going down the stairs, what are you doing? You're going bang, bang, bang. So carry a backpack. Put your husband on your back. <laughs> he already is. <laughs> so, so any of those things are really what we need. But we also need to walk. So in the latest paper I read, just happened to be last night, and, and uh, I've downloaded, I've downloaded thousands of studies in a moment, so I just go, and, and what they did was got people to walk a thousand, 10,000 steps, which is, you know, the good, the good amount you're supposed to do, um, um, 10,000 steps, and then they got them to uh, do 60 jumps with 4G, that's gravitational, I don't know what that is, but it's 4G gravitational forces or something like that, so 60 jumps like that. Um, um, 60 is a hell of a lot though, isn't it? To try and do, maybe it was spread over the day. And they found that their, their um, uh, bone density from there up to here was absolutely fantastic as a result of that combination of walking. And, 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 and also they were really good at mimicking monkeys and things too. <laughs> so they could have gone in any show or zoo or anything like that and had a full-time job. But it's really saying doing anything. Cycling isn't great for the bones, except it does help with the bones. And swimming isn't great for the bones, but it does help with the bones. But the, the ones are impact, resistance, training, and then anything else that's thrown on top. And for exercise, whatever you want to do, if you love dancing, dance. Dancers, they actually find dancers, because they're moving around a lot, I imagine, um, dancers have really good um, bone mineral density as well. So anything that's 
getting that impact moving up and down is great. And uh, it's so simple to do. You just add it into your daily lives wherever you can. Yoga. There's a little bit of research on yoga, Tai Chi. Uh, what was the other one that, that shows it's good for bone mineral density, but also it shows that it's great for depression, mood, cardiovascular, arthritis, stiffness, pain, disability. And a lot of people go, I can't do that because I'm sore. I can't do that because, well, you should do it because you are. Fatigue comes from inactivity, inactivity of the brain and inactivity in the body and a combination which sets off a ne negative cycle of it. So the message is simple, find something you want to do. Meditation, great for pain, mental pain. I went through some trauma in my life a long time ago, uh, just over 20 years ago, and I can tell you the thing that got me through was meditation. I had pain, I, you know, someone passed away incredibly close to me, and so um, I, I, meditation got me through, but it also energizes you. And even if it's for a few minutes a day, and most of you think I can't do that, well you can, that's attitude. Because meditation is just finding that stillness, sitting out the back of the cruise ship and just watching that water for five minutes, or two minutes, or one minute, or longer, if it's not raining, cold, wet, and windy. Okay, so, Wait till we get to Melbourne, apparently, for all those. So this is what it does. It improves all health outcomes. And yet, and but as we age, we get better at it because we get less busy. We've got less things going on. Sleep. And as we age, as we age, sleep gets worse. I remember when I was a kid, when I was young, I traveled around the world. I hitchhiked around the world for four and a half years. It was a great time. Not as good as now though, by the way. Now I go on a cruise ship around the world. <laughs> but um, I hitchhiked around the world, did all these things. And we would go into a room with 15 or 20 or 30 people in the room, lay down a yoga mat and we'd all fall asleep. You know, we'd wake up the next morning, we'd have the energy to do everything. I always had an afternoon nap even when I was a kid, but uh, you know, we had that nowadays. You, know, you go in a room and you can hear someone three cabins down going, <laughs> whatever it is. And that's not happening in our room, by the way. Uh, but you, know, you hear these noises, you go, I can't sleep, I can't wake, whatever it is. We become very high. Now, one of those reasons is our melatonin levels go down. Have I told you about the benefits of melatonin? Mm. Yeah. You get the idea, don't you? Go get a prescription if you're in Australia prescription from your GP, say you're just not sleeping well, get some melatonin, and even if it doesn't help you sleep, it helps with so many other things out there. So many. It's called pleiotrophy, which means it helps with at least 101 other things around the body. So that's how, that's how good it is. Anyway, coming back, we need to find out ways to sleep, and there are lots of things, because sleep, poor sleep causes pain, poor sleep is energy draining. And so focusing on your sleep. And there are many, many things. And, and even, even as a researcher, I forget the things that I can do to improve sleep. One of the things you can do is just turn off the internet, turn off the TV an hour or two before you want to go to sleep. Now I see everyone's moving out of the room already. Or if I said it to teenagers, they would. They said, that's impossible, you know? But turn it off because that stimulation while watching, even it doesn't matter, even if it's a nice movie, it's still stimulating your brain. Rather than sitting down and, and having a light conversation, watching a candle blow, um, glow or something like that, it doesn't matter. There are so many things we can do. Get rid of that busyness out of our head. Stop the thinking, stop the work at five o'clock. Increase physical activity and all these things feed off. Good physical activity means good sleep usually as well. So it's a combination of these things that add up all together. And here are some of the things that the energy drainers, energy drainers and pain gainers, and most people don't realize that, but all of your vegetable oils, all of your vegetable oils increase inflammation. So your, your uh, uh, cotton seeds, your canola oil, your um, vegetable oils, your margarine, even if they've got a yin-yang sign on the side. Look how stupid that yin-yang sign is. They've got a yin-yang sign and they're supposed to lower your cholesterol. They do, but they increase your risk of a heart attack and stroke. 
Vegetable oils are inflammatory, which leads to an increased risk of heart attack and stroke. So my message is simple, folks. Get off all of the vegetable oils. Then you've got, then you've got the other ones, so years to special K. You know, these are all processed grains which form sugar in your mouth before you've even closed it for the first time. So you're getting a sugar hit with or without them. And I, many, many, probably two decades ago now, I had a footballer in one of my classes, uh, one of the West Coast back then, or Fremantle doctors, and uh, they're the football teams in uh, Australian rules football. And he, uh, he, had, he had some um, coke in front of me. And I went up and said, what are you doing? He said, oh, this is my day off. I have special K and coke. And I said, how come you have that? He says, well, all the other days I have to eat really well because I train. I don't for the life of me understand why he had him on his days off. By the way, he didn't mix the Coke with the Special K because that probably would have improved them both. Can you imagine the Special K bubbling up there? Nutri-grain, the breakfast of rusty men, not iron men. It causes exactly the same process as rust, oxidation. And then you've got the Coke and the Diet Coke. Oh, Coke, I only have Diet Coke. How many conversations have I heard people tell me? Oh, it's all right, I have Diet Coke. Coke is a joke. Coke is a no-go. The, they actually find that people who have Diet Coke put on more weight than the people who have Coke Coke, full sugar Coke. They find that it actually increases the risk of diabetes type 2 insulin sensitivity, decreasing insulin sensitivity, and the sugar spikes even more than Coke with sugar in it. They've done the studies on mice where they've given them the, the artificial sweeteners, and they find that they want to eat more, their metabolism goes down, they get less energy, and they end up getting sicker faster, just from having these artificial sweeteners. Please, oh, by the way, <coughs> They poison the gut microbiome. That's just another one. Everything, I tell you, everything comes back to the gut. That's why I've been working on it for just over 20 years now. And then you've got your spaghetti. Hey, have a Mediterranean meal. That's a little bit of spaghetti with a lot of sauce. Not a lot of spaghetti with a little bit of sauce. Have it with the veggies. Have it with all those other spices and other bits and pieces in there. That's okay. Fiber. Hold on, you never thought fiber was going to help you? Fiber has no calories in it, and yet the studies show it increases people's energy. What? You're joking. Now, you would never have thought that, would you? No. Well, here's a few things it does, by the way. If you have seven to 10 grams more, watch. A reduction in, a 9% reduction in cardiovascular risk, that's better than any drug on the market. A 9% reduction of time to diabetes. That's from having one spoonful of fibre. Have I convinced you? A 10% reduction of colorectal cancer. So if you have 20 grams, you reduce it again by another 10%. You're never going to get it down to zero, but the average Australian has about 16 grams of fibre. The average person from the US has 14 grams of fibre, except our US friends down here. They're eating a lot of fibre nowadays and it reduces your mortality by 11%. It's a superfood. It's a superfood, and yet, has anyone told you that? Everybody just says, I'll have more fiber, I'll keep you going to the toilet. That's a lot of crap. <laughs> oh, I was waiting for that one. That's, right. That's a good one. <clears throat> but um, the answer is, and then fiber can account for up to 41% of depressive symptoms. Not if you eat it, but it helps reduce depression. But the one thing here, it lowers inflammation, lowers oxidation, it lowers pain. And the studies show that it lowers pain. It lowers inflammation, lowers oxidation, and it increases energy. And the studies show it increases energy. The exact opposite of what you would think. And all it is is Woolworths combination mixtures, your combination mixtures, K-fiber combination mixtures, fibers. The better the ones, the better it is. But you get the idea, don't you? How simple health can be. Wouldn't you have liked to have come to my lecture 40 years ago? I didn't give this lecture then. No matter. Actually, I've been talking about fibre for 40 years. Another thing, interestingly enough, that increases energy and decreases pain 
is essential fatty acids. You will remember that picture from the first couple of lectures. That's your fish oils, one called EPA and DHA. If you're not eating three or four serves of fish a day, supplement with fish oils. Get the wild caught fish oils. It probably cost you an extra dollar or something to contain for the container, but all of them in Australia, the uh, Blackmores and the, uh, what are the other ones? Anyway, they've, 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 they've all got their own versions of fish oils. Go for the wild caught ones. You don't want the farm fed fish or the farm fed fish oils. Go for the wild caught one. Immune weakness, and now your immune system is a major drainer on your energy. This is why the studies show that when you increase your omega-3 fatty acids, you increase your energy. And that's why it decreases your, your pain. Depression, lack of motivation, ADHD, and poor memory. Do you know I, I was ADHD as a kid? I'm just glad they didn't have Ritalin back then. I'm still ADHD, by the way. But it's controlled ADHD, my wife says now. And apparently if you mix olive oil or have olive oil in your diet, along with fish oils, it actually has a multiplier benefit. So, milk. <laughs> milk is absolutely fantastic for building really fat calves. That's not these calves, that's the calf cows, calf, young, whatever it is. And the message, it doesn't build the brain, like it doesn't build children, but in our case, it leads to an increase in inflammation. But where am I going to get my calcium from, from my bones? You get it out of your almonds, your nuts, your seeds, your veggies. You get it out of all of the other foods. And on top of that, you already know, if you want the best bones, what's the single best bone health food there is? Prunes. Prunes. Who's eating prunes nowadays? Okay, that's good. That's good. Who never used to eat prunes, but now is eating prunes? I wondered why they're disappearing quickly. <laughs> and so it's really, head off everybody, please. If you get one thing out of my lectures, prunes rock, okay? They really do, go for them. Dairy is not a great food. Enjoy a bit of cheese. Enjoy a little bit of milk in your tea. Don't drink milk. Now, risk factors for pain. Here they are. I don't have to tell you, but look at all of them. They're all the ones I've been saying. So diet, fructose, sodium, potassium. What's sodium and potassium? Well, everyone tells you, you've got too much sodium in your diet, right? Have you been told that one? High blood pressure, too much sodium, cut it out. Well, here's my take on it. After writing a whole book on it with over a thousand references, and my take on it is it's nothing to do with sodium. That's to do with potassium. In our body, sodium and potassium are in a beautiful dance together. And they pirouette and go round. And if you've got too much sodium, you don't get the potassium part of the dance. You've got too much potassium, but we don't get potassium. Potassium is down here and sodium's here. So you can try to get this down, but nobody can. And if you do, it lowers your risk of a, lowers your risk of a heart attack or a stroke by about half, a, half of half of 1%. Whereas you can get your potassium up. Anyone know a rich source of potassium? Bananas, rock melon, watermelon, cantaloupe. Most of your fruits out there are rich in potassium. Ah, oh, prunes. I've got to go throw that one in. <laughs> Prune, they're rich in potassium. So all we're going to do is up the potassium, don't worry about the sodium, up the potassium. And that lowers the risk of a heart attack and stroke by about 10% simply by doing that. But also gives you energy because your sodium potassium ratio is about sending the messages around your body really quickly. I won't try to go into that, but it's the sodium, potassium, and poor nutrition. Obesity, diabetes, um, diabetes. An absolute drain on your energy and a huge risk factor for every single form of chronic illness. And it's not just the diabetes, the worst one is the unregulated blood sugar levels. The sugar levels that are spiking all the time. I'm getting sick of saying this, but do you know the best food to regulate blood sugar levels? Prunes. <laughs> I can't believe it. I've got, to, I've got to buy shares in the prune industry, don't I? But sure, prunes have a hypoglycemic. They actually take the blood sugar levels down. So in a study where they had them with people eating white bread, which is the 100 index for 
hypo, hypo glycemia, blood sugar levels, it brought it down. It actually makes it go lower. So it's the thing that lowers it. But I'm not going to even mention the word prunes again, okay? And we go back through all these. And then I want to bring it back to the gut. Because here are all these conditions, gout, migraine, kidney stones, arthritis. They're probably, the, they're the kind of the four ones that I thought were the biggest in, in arthritis. I've got rheumatoid and osteo. I made this slide up last night, by the way. So quickly to, to get this across to you. And those four are the major causes of pain and, and obviously low energy as well. All of them are linked to the gut. So someone came up to me earlier on the, and they said, well, you know, can you, can you talk about gout? Because he's got gout, but he's also got hypertension and he's also got arthritis. And he's probably also got diabetes, but it hasn't been diagnosed yet. And he's also got, you get the idea? So what do you want to do? You can go on one medication to treat each of them and have all the stuff, or you can start treating them via the gut. And they now know and over here on the left hand side, I think that is facing that you've got there, they know that the gut is influencing every single one of those conditions because if they've got leaky gut, which is when there's literally food and bits and pieces getting through into the blood, it increases your gout, migraine, kidney stones and arthritis. They find that people who have rheumatoid arthritis, RA, have a different gut microbiome than the ones who are healthy. And the ones who have gout, they can, they can now identify certain species of bacteria in the gut, which are linked to gout and to arthritis. And they're linked. And they can now identify that there'll be a time in 10 years where they will take a sample of your gut microbiome. They'll come back a day later and say, you're at risk of a heart attack stroke da, 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 just based on your microbiome. That's how good it is getting. They can already do it, but it's only done in studies now. And there's still a long way to go, but 10 years time, with the speed of which this is all happening on the gut, you will be looking back on this, hopefully in another 20 years time. That's because you're gonna live longer, okay? And you're following, and you'll go, that's what that guy said on stage. You know that, that incredibly good looking bald guy? <laughs> So we've got, we know the gut. So rheumatoid arthritis have different gut bacteria to osteoarthritis and different bacteria to gout. And, different, and so, and coming back, then you, and the main one, by the way, is the one that's decreased is the bifidobacteria and the lactobacillus. That's the one you get in your good yogurts. Check out, if you're gonna get a yogurt, get a good yogurt. What's a good yogurt? No idea. Just make sure it says that it's got lots of probiotics in there and get, Pot set one. You gotta yell it. Pot set. Pot set, yes, that's right, pot set. Pot set yogurt. We did some research. Jeez, that was, I've forgotten it. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> Cut that out of the movie. Cut that out of the skit. <laughs> I forgot something, yeah, very common. Um, we did some research um, about 15 years ago, I think, 20 years ago now, and we looked at the ones over in Perth that had the highest level of bacteria in them and the ones were the pot set ones. So over in Perth, the highest level was one called Mandela, which I think you may get in the East Coast because after we did a, a Today Tonight version of it, it sold across Australia, and I still never got my free yogurt. <laughs> and then the other ones are the Yalna and the other ones. So if it says pot set, get those ones. Or if it says special, they got new, they got new ones now that uh, something like that is called Bacillus coagulin and things, but pot set ones. They also find that dysbiosis increases rheumatoid arthritis. So if they look at someone's gut and they go, oh, look, it's not, not as, as big and as wide and like a rainforest as it should be, the chance of them having rheumatoid arthritis, gout, migraine or kidney stones is really, really high. And then they find if they do a fecal transplant, you ready? It gets rid of the gout, migraine, kidney stones and arthritis in mice. So they can do it from healthy mice into sick mice and it gets rid of the gout. Or they can do it from healthy humans into the gout mice and it gets rid of the gout. Now again, fecal microbiome transplants are only now used 
in life kind of saving conditions, particularly to do with um, a run runaway uh, diarrhea in hospitals caused by something called clostridium. But in the future, well, I don't like it. Why don't I like it? Because a fecal microbiome transplant, I believe in whatever goes up should come down, and I believe in feeding it from the top. And I'm going to give you one simple hint to do with the gut. Start today because it takes a lifetime to do it. It's not one thing that's going to change overnight. And the studies on fecal microbiome transplant, the poo swapping, is that it only lasts a period of time. Four, five weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, and then it starts to decline because they're not feeding it from the top. They're going back to their old habits. And that's the problem with all of this research. It gets over to the medical industry, which is always talking about a miracle cure. There is no miracle cure for the gut. It's looking after it and building it constantly, working on it constantly, doing everything you need to do constantly. And of course, on the bottom right-hand corner is all of the things that it does. So inflammation, which is poor energy and pain, oxidation. It affects your endocrine, your hormones, nervous system, so many things. And here's a study. I just thought I'd put this one up. It's one of the studies I had in there. Just by giving some people probiotics. Now, I'd suggest you've got a camera and take a photograph of it because that's got the actual species. It's got the, um, where is it, the Lactobacillus acidophilus, which is the main yogurt one, and the, the uh, Lactobacillus casei and the Bifidobacter bifidum. So you can actually get it. And it tells you the quantity that they use in the experiments. Now, because I review them, I often don't put them up, but I put this one up so you get an idea of how much they gave them over a period. And in an eight-week period, they found that um, the people with rheumatoid arthritis had beneficial effects in the DAS. The DAS is the pain score level for arthritis. So the pain score came down just by taking probiotics. Homer, and these are your um, blood and your inflammation markers. So just by taking probiotics. And again, there are thousands of these studies now. So please understand how simple it can be. With that in mind, take a quick photo of that. There's the supplements for energy, pain, gout, arthritis, and all of those other conditions up there. It's pretty simple, folks. We are deficient. And vitamin B is the one that stands out. But then you've got magnesium and potassium. I mentioned melatonin. I've already mentioned multiple times. Fiber, coercis, and resveratrol, omega-3s, sodium bicarb. Now, I've got a miracle formula here. You ready? Sodium bicarb mixed with a bit of magnesium. And I've had a couple of people who wake up in the morning, would wake up and go, oh, I'm really tired. I'm a bit run down, no energy. And I'd say, sodium bicarb and a bit of magnesium. They're the two things that can go together. And that gives your muscles the chemistry to be able to do things, and it gives your body the pH to be able to do things. And within one day, both of those people commented how good it was. And the, the cost, sodium bicarb and probiotics I've already talked about there. Herbs, lots of studies on herbs. And I don't want to go into that area because there are so many things that you can buy in the shops now that have herbs for energy. So you can go get your Swiss formula for her with herbs and energy. But they've got ones like Boswellia, curcuma is um, uh, turmeric, uh, chamomile, withania is... Um, oh, and Now, what's the name of withania? It's got another name. Ashwagandha. Ashwagandha or something, yeah, yeah. Uh, Devil's Claw comes up in the studies that I was just looking through uh, on, my, on my computer. So there's lots of herbs that help balance your energy and your pain. So really simple strategies there. And essential oils. And... I, I was looking up all of the research on essential oils and pain because I'm, I'll, I'll do a little video on it. But the one that stand that stood out so much on pain was lavender. And lavender for arthritis and gout, labour pain, cesarean birth. I know you're not uh, 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 okay. Laparoscop laparoscopic surgery, which is um, when they, they they band up or take a video to see your stomach out. Uh, so the pain, coronary bypass, migraine, all of those things, the pain level has been lowered just by using simple aromatherapy with lavender. How good is that? Lavender is my second only to rosemary. And on this trip, I'm carrying lavender and I'm carrying rosemary. 
So please understand how effective they can be. And then these are the other things. I put these ones up yesterday and the day before. But you get energy from eating slow.